morning, everyone. This is Amanda Aguilar, your host for See You Later 2020, closing the books at year end zero. I'm happy to have you guys on. There's a ton of you guys showing up. Um, still more people coming in, which is awesome. Uh, this webinar series actually came out of me writing the book over the summer. I realized that uh, I thought I knew a lot about zero, but until you are required to sit down and push every button and see what every option does, Sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't really understand this. So definitely the first two sessions um, that we did were based on stuff that I just thought people need to know more about um, from writing the book. This session is, um, I'm just sharing with you my experience of how I close books in Zero. We've done this for several years. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I do have an accounting practice. In addition to having elephant training, um, I do still run an accounting practice down in New Orleans. And, um, and so even though that's probably only about a quarter of my time now, I do love to make sure that I am the one wrapping up the year and stuff. So I'm gonna share that with you. So the plan for today is one thing. It's just for me to share my year end checklist in zero with you. Everyone has a different way of doing this. Um, if, you, if you surveyed 10 different um, zero partners, there'd probably be 10 different checklists and 10 different ways to do this. So this is just how I do it. Um, you should probably <laughs> adapt it for your clients and your types of clients. We have a lot of sole proprietor professional services type clients. So um, marketing consultants and um, I have a, a blog writer, I've got a um, bunch of lawyers. So this is not gonna fit probably, you know, as is e-commerce companies or construction companies or manufacturing companies or anybody with a lot of inventory, but hopefully it's a good starting spot for you. In the handouts uh, section, you should see my uh, PDF of my list. That's basically what we are going to cover today. Reclass fixed assets under a company's threshold. Again, this is gonna be something that um, just, it's gonna be company by company. A lot of folks are using that $2,500 threshold for fixed assets um, for, our clients that's kind of high like i have a lot of much smaller clients um so what i generally do is it depends on client on the books i will uh, my threshold a lot for a lot of them is 500 but then i make sure that the um that the tax preparer has all the details and they can make the choice of how they want to write them off or depreciate them or whatever um, we don't do tax prep here we just do the bookkeeping and accounting so so we want to go ahead and make sure that we do this um, is anybody using um, the fixed assets module, the, the, the functionality in Zero, fixed assets functionality? Couple people. Um, yeah, I don't. I'll say this: when I started using Zero, it was terrible, and so I never used it. <laughs> so um, we would keep se separate spreadsheets generally, or um, what we do most of the time is write it, write the depreciation to the tax return, like we just book in, book enter it. Um, in, but I will say I have two or three folks that are like power zero users and they are all in on depreciation in zero now, um, using it for fixed assets. Patty Sharp is one of them. I don't think she's on, but I feel like I saw somebody from um, Catching Clouds on here. She's one that is using it. Um, Jay Kilman is using it. So it has gotten a lot better since it was uh, first released. So take a peek at it if you are thinking about maybe doing depreciation in the system. Um, I book true up the prior year tax depreciation. So what we usually do for our folks is that I will um, book a monthly depreciation estimate based on the prior year's tax return. So we'll just divide by 12 and book a, de a depreciation estimate each, each period. And then when I get to the end of 2020, <laughs> I'm gonna go back and get the final 2019 tax return for the client and true it up so for our clients most of them we keep the books uh, the depreciation based on tax so we'll just i'll just go up and got, grab the final tax return you know that just probably got prepared two months ago go put a, uh, an entry in and true it up next thing i do is a review prior year journal entries to make new ones um i think probably everybody on here knows how to make a journal entry but you go into um accounting, advanced manual journals. And I always look at the prior year and make sure that we do those if we need to. Some of those would be like 
um, owner expenses to be reimbursed. So if we have um, the, uh, an owner client who has been using personal money and they've just been sitting on receipts, we'll make sure those get in. Uh, we'll make sure same thing with mileage allowances. So um, put those in, intercompany transfers. Um, and so reclassing owner's compensation. So if we have Gusto pushing all of our sales, I'm sorry, all of our salaries into one GL line, but we have an S Corp owner, we'll make that reclass <clears throat> so it shows. So we just wanna make sure we do those at year end. The other thing we do is we close out prior year draws to retained earnings. So zero um, doesn't do this automatically. So if you have a general ledger line for owner's draws that's in the equity section, um, and that's where you're posting it to, it's just gonna roll, it's just gonna keep rolling. So at the end of the year, I will go back and make sure that I'm closing the prior year's um, draws to retained earnings so that when I run the statements for the tax preparer, they're only seeing the draws for the current year. So it's just one quick little thing um, that makes it much easier for the tax preparer. We also like to um, put out a 12 month income statement. So <clears throat> this is easy to do in report uh, layouts. If you were on my session on Tuesday, we talked about report templates, which I kind of ran out of time and I couldn't um, go into it as much as I wanted. And plus it was being real buggy on Tuesday. But one of the things that we would do is create a 12 month income statement. Um, and we like doing this for um, at the template level, because if you, you, can, you can do it where you can compare prior periods, but zero's default is like to, to put the periods in kind of the wrong order. Um, so we go and create a January through December 12 month income statement. Publish statements for, for um, the tax preparer. So we always um, produce accrual based tax, I'm sorry, accrual based um, financial statements throughout the, the year for discussing with our clients. But um, most of the tax returns are done on cash basis. So we will go in and run cash basis, balance sheet, and income statement. And we mark them in the title final for tax prep. And those are the ones that go over to the tax preparer. Um, 14 is to lock dates. So I'll just show you in case you don't know this exists or don't know where it is. Um, under advanced financial settings, <clears throat> down here, lock dates. You have two options. Um, you can stop everybody except advisors. So people with advisor level permissions, you can stop everyone except them for making changes. So you definitely want to go do this <laughs> um, soon and then stop everybody from making changes um, before a certain date. So we're going to lock our dates down. And then the last one is um, after all this is done, we, we want to take time at this point in our cycle to save our work papers, save our bank statements, make sure everything's organized in our system. Uh, we just actually switched from Box to Google Drive this year. So, um, but we kept our, our structure, which is we have a folder under each client for each year's stuff. So we wanna make sure that that's all cleaned up um, because it's, it's much easier to find those things and download those things now than it will be a couple years from now when it's a complete mess.
Um, make sure you grab those downloads um, with the checklist if that's something you want to keep. There is a Facebook group if you're on Facebook. Um, this is a pretty good resource. I'm trying to build it as a community where folks can ask questions and help each other out. So um, if you're on Facebook, feel free to join. Um, love you guys. Take care, and I'll see you around soon. Oh, 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 oh